Hello everyone. Today in this lesson, I am going to discuss you the finite elements method on the spring elements. So we can see the figure here. So there are uh, uh, three spring elements which are connected in the series, and at both the ends, it is rigidly connected. So the nodes which have been represented at the fixed end, that is one and four, are the fixed end. And the, the connecting from one spring to another spring, there it will be a node. So this will be the node one, and after that node two. After the second element, it will be node three, and for after the third element, again it will be node four. So like that, we have arranged in the four nodes, and there are three elements. Three elements means uh, three springs which are connected. So that uh, K1, K2, K3. K1, K2, K3. These are the uh, stiffness uh, value for the spring elements. And at the node three, there is an force which are applying uh, towards the uh, node four. So at the four, uh, uh, this load is applied. It means that the basic concept is that when you apply the load at the node three, so we can find the displacement at one, and we can obtain the displacement at two, and at three also. So these three, which will be under an uh, Uh, positive deformation means it will be an tensile deformation because at the two it will also make the deformation in the tensile and at the one also it will give the tensile deformation. Whereas in the uh, K two value, whereas in the K three where the deformation is under compression, so this will be have a negative uh, deformation. So we'll check what are the deformation which will we can obtain here now. Okay, so now this is a question. After the diagram for the spring system shown in the above, uh, K1, K2, and K3 value is mentioned, where K1 is equal to 100 newton per millimeter. The unit of the stiffness will be force per uh, deformation. That's why force newton and deformation will be in millimeter. Uh, and K2 is given as 200, and K3 is 100 newton per millimeter. And the value of P, P is nothing but the load that is given as 500 newton. So you need to calculate uh, the first one, the global stiffness matrix. Uh, that is K. Uh, K is assembling of all the three elements. Then we will get obtain the global stiffness matrix. Again, the displacement at two and three. So what is the displacement at two and three? You are going to calculate. So we will write here. There is a displacement of two, and here it will be n three. And at the fixed end, there is a displacement u1, and at four, it will be u4. So these are the displacement. And also, you need to calculate the reaction forces. So reaction forces it will be obtained where we have the fixed end. So at one, there is a reaction forces that is we can say R1, and reaction force at four that will be R4. You need to calculate. And also, you need to calculate the spring in uh, the force in the spring two. So, what is the force at the spring two? That is also you are going to calculate. So, these are the question. Now, uh, we will calculate the stiffness matrix for each element. So, for the spring one. So K1, K1 is equal to as we know A E by L, uh, A E by L in the bracket one minus one minus one one that is for a bar element. But for this spring element, the K value which is directly given, so we can uh, write in the matrix form that is K1 value is given hundred and minus hundred again minus hundred and hundred. So this is the stiffness equation for element one. So after that, write down the deformation for the element one also. For the element one, so this is one and two, three. So for the element one, the deformation is u one and u two. So here it will be u one, u two in the row also u one, u two. Similarly, calculate for element two. So for the element two again, it will be same equation, same formula. That is, uh, for two, it is two hundred. Minus two hundred, minus two hundred, two hundred. Again, here deformation it will be changes now. For the element two, the deformation from U two to U three. So U two, U three. 
u2 u3 similarly for k3 so for the k3 the value is 100 minus 100 so minus 100 100 so what is the deformation here u3 u4 again in the row u3 u4 so after completing the st uh, stiffness matrix for element 1 2 and 3 which you are calculated now the first one you need to calculate the global stiffness matrix the global stiffness matrix is nothing but assembling of all the stiffness matrix so that is k is equal to k1 plus k2 plus k3 assembling of all the elements so now for this we have a node of uh, we have a node for 1 to 4 so write down all the displacement that is u1 u2 u3 u4 similarly in the row u1 u2 u3 u4 now you have to look for all the three elements suppose in the first row and first column first row first column that is u1 u1 so u1 u1 the value is 100 so like that you have to calculate for all the element u1 uh, u2 so u1 u2 that is minus 100 u1 u3 so there is no relation for u1 u3 so it will be 0 0 u4 also 0 now u2 u1 so u2 u1 having minus 100 u2 u2 so u2 u2 this value we have 100 again we have the another value at uh, element 2 also that is 200 so 200 plus 100 that is 300 we can write now u2 u3 so u2 u3 that is minus 200 u2 u4 there is no relation so it will be 0 now u3 u1 no relation 0 u3 u2 u3 u2 that is minus 200 u3 u3 so u3 u3 it is 200 again we have the another value at element 3 that is 100 so 200 plus 100 so it will be 300 again u3 u4 u3 u4 so 100 now u1 u4 u1 0 u4 u2 0 u4 u3 so u4 u3 that is minus 100 now u4 u4 we got as 100 okay so here u3 u4 so u3 u4 that is minus 100 we have to write so this is a global shift place metric once again i will write in the neat form so here it will be or we can write where k is equal to hundred minus hundred zero zero so minus hundred three hundred again minus two hundred zero zero minus two hundred three hundred minus hundred zero zero minus hundred hundred so these are the displacement you have to write the displacement also u1 u2 u3 u4 again u1 u2 u3 u4 okay so this is nothing but the global stiffness matrix so the first option is completed here we have calculated this global stiffness matrix uh, so here we can see the one this element this matrix is an asymmetric matrix so here you can see it is an asymmetry okay so it is minus 100 it's entirely symmetry about the axis now after that the equilibrium equation you have to write the equilibrium equation for the whole system whole system means for the entire spring system you have to write where the equation for the stiffness matrix that is k u is equal to f so as we have calculated the difference matrix k 
same thing you have to write once again minus 100 300 minus 200 0 0 minus 200 300 0 0 minus 100 100 now after that the second one is the displacement so we have total four displacement that is u1 u2 u3 and u4 is equal to the force vector so here we can denote the force vector at 1 there will be f1 at 2 there will be f2 at 3 we have the p and at 4 it will be f4 now you can say there is no force at 1 and 4 and at 2 also so there is a force at 3 only okay so same write down f1 and no force at f2 that we can write 0 and force at 3 that is p force at 4 f4 so this will become 0 now f1 and f4 by applying the boundary condition the next step is to apply the applying the boundary condition So what are the boundary conditions here? The boundary conditions we have to find out now. So whenever there is a fixed end, when this 1 and 4 is a fixed end, so it means that you can directly take the value of displacement, it will be 0. So u1 and u4 that should be 0. So this is nothing but the boundary condition when it is a fixed end. And also the load at f3 we have applied a load of P that is 500 Newton. So this is also another boundary condition. Now here in the next step apply this boundary condition in the equation. So again you have to write the same equation and apply the boundary condition. So u1 is equal to 0, u4 that is again 0 and the P as 500 Newton. So I made changes in the same equation. So now by applying the elimination method so the displacement is zero so their first row and their first column it will get cancelled and similarly the third row sorry the fourth row and their fourth column it will get cancelled so what remains here now so this is the remaining value so 300 minus 200 minus 200 300 so it is in the matrix now the remaining after elimination u2 and u3 is the remaining is equal to 0 500 so this is an equation number one we can write so after that So after that we are again going to uh, calculate the displacements at 2 and 3. So make in the equation where 300 u2 minus 200 u3 is equal to 0. The second equation so this into you have to multiply this one. Uh, so this column is going to multiply with the row. So 200 u2 plus 300 u3 is equal to 500 so this two equation which are form after that so now just anything is possible to get cancelled so you cannot cancel because it's 300 and 200 if you make the multiplication of 2 to the equation 1 and 3 to the equation 2 it will change us now so it will be 600 u2 minus 400 u3 is equal to 0 so you have to multiply entire equation after that 3 into this equation so again minus 600 u2 plus 900 u3 is equal to 3 into 5 it is 1500 so this becomes the equation now so these two will get cancelled 600 600 plus 600 and this is minus 600 so after that 900 minus 5, 400 so you will get 500 u3 is equal to 1500 so now u3 is equal to 3 
you will get so the displacement it will be in millimeter so this is a deformation which you have calculated for 3 node 3 and also for the 2 you, have, you can calculate substitute this value in any one of the equation you will get the uh, u2 value so 600 300 u2 minus 200 u3 is equal to 0 so this is better because it's a short equation so here it will be 300 u2 minus 200 into u3 value that is 3 is equal to 0 now u2 is equal to it will be 600 in the rhs divided by 300 so you will get 2 mm the displacement at node 2 is 2 millimeter so the second option which you have calculated now the displacement at 2 so after that we are going to calculate the reaction forces so reaction forces at 1 and 4 you are going to calculate please subscribe the channel and